All right, welcome to Lectio 2 of Chapter 1, Preliminary Lecture. Okay, so in this one, we're going to continue on with the basic grammar that's introduced in Chapter 1. So getting started, we have to return to the first declension noun. Okay, why is that? Well, because we're going to see the plural form of this noun in the nominative case. So let's go ahead and make our chart again. So if you'll remember, cases not only tell us its function in the sentence, but it also tells us, let me thicken this up, also tells us the number, right? So if it's singular or plural. So off to the side here, I'm going to write my abbreviations for the cases. Remember, I'm just getting you in the habit of seeing what it's going to look like as we go through these chapters. We'll keep adding to our cases. But right now, we're just going to focus on the ones that we're dealing with. So in the nominative, right, if you recall, we've always seen an A on a first declension noun in the, in the nominative singular. Okay, in the ablative singular, we have seen an A with a macron over the top of it. In the next, in the next textual analysis lecture, we're going to see the plural form in the nominative, which is an A-E. Right? That's what the plural ending will be like in the nominative case. So you have to remember the nominative case is used for the subject and to identify the predicate nominative of the sentence. So that means that a linking verb has to be present in the sentence. And you have to remember that a linking verb does not perform action. It simply tells you or conveys to you a state of being. Okay. So that is what we need to focus on right now in the first declension noun. Remember also the majority of them are feminine. Okay, continuing on. Now we need to talk about the Latin adjective. Okay, there are a couple groups of adjectives in the Latin language. The first one we're going to encounter is called the first slash second declension adjectives. Okay, what is an adjective to begin with? What do we need to know about an adjective? An adjective describes or modifies a noun in the sentence, right? So examples of adjectives are down here, right? Good, bad, brave, hideous, etc. Okay. <clears throat> so continuing on. When we encounter a noun in a dictionary or a vocabulary list or anything like that that I provide you, an adjective contains three forms. It has a masculine form, a feminine form, and a neuter form. Okay, with the gradual approach of this text, these forms will not be introduced all at once. So we're only going to see a few of them. Okay, and eventually we'll get to, uh, to the point where we can decline a whole chart of adjectives. And once we've gone through the first seven chapters, we'll be able to do that. And you'll see it's very easy with the approach that this book uses to introduce case systems over time. Remember that the Latin noun, nouns have only one gender and belong to only one declension group. So that's the noun. The adjective, however, has all genders and use, uses the endings from the first and second declension nouns. And we're going we're to see that in this chapter. So it's, it's very important to pay attention to your adjectives, and usually in the word order of Latin sentences, the adjective comes after the noun it modifies. Okay, that's usually. It's not all the time, but most of the time. All right, also in this lecture, we're going to return to the second declension nouns, but we're going to be dealing with the neuter second declension nouns. Okay, they're, they're similar to the second declension masculine nouns, but it's a little different, and we'll, we'll see that. So second declension masculine nouns are, can be neuter and gender. Most of the endings used for the neuters are identical, almost identical, with the endings of second declension masculine. So there's just a few uh, cases that are they're different. We'll see those as we go. All right, so in order to approach this we need to we need to get our chart going again remember cases not only tell us the function of the noun in the sentence 
but they also tell us number, like if they're singular or plural. So you're like, why is he repeating himself over and over? Because repetition is key in language learning. Okay, it is key. You always have to redo stuff all the time in order for the language to stick. You're using a different part of your brain. All right, I'll get our chart going here. Nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. Oop. Ablative. Okay, so this is the one we're worried about right now. Okay, so we're going to see in this next Lectio that the nominative singular form for neuter nouns is U-M. Okay, the plural nominative is interesting because it looks like, look at that, it's an A. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. Doesn't a first declension noun nominative singular have an A? That's correct. So the only thing that will help you in recognizing the difference between the two, if it's a feminine or a neuter noun, is context clues. Okay, and I will show you those context clues in the lecture when we get to the text itself. Okay, also, what is similar that we discussed in the previous preliminary lecture is the ablative singular of neuter nouns are the same as the second declension masculine. Okay, it's an O with a macron over the top of it. Okay, so don't worry, we're going to see some examples of these in the actual text. Okay, moving on. So we saw the, the enclitic ne last time. It introduces a question that expects a positive or a negative answer. This time we're going to see the interrogative num. Right, so remember that an interrogative is a word used to introduce a question. The interrogative num expects a negative response only. Okay, it only expects a negative response. So it's you're going to see a negation of some sort in the sentence that follows it. All right. <clears throat> so that is it for this preliminary lecture. All right. So I advise you to review this, go over it again to make sure you have the concepts down. And I will see you in the textual analysis portion in the next video. All right. I do thank you.